Have you ever wondered what happens to us when we pass away? Does the universe send us back to Earth in another form? This question has captivated the human mind for millennia. The idea that we might return to Earth after death, reincarnated into a new form, is a concept that spans across cultures and religions. But could there be a universal perspective to this belief? Could there be a scientific basis to the spiritual theory of reincarnation? Let's delve into the heart of the cosmos, where the laws of physics reign supreme. Here we find the principle of energy conservation. This unyielding law states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. A flicker of light becomes a wave of heat. A gust of wind becomes the kinetic energy of a spinning turbine. Energy, in its essence, is immortal, forever dancing in an eternal ballet of transformation. Now let's consider ourselves, we too are forms of energy. The warmth of our bodies, the electrical impulses coursing through our brains, the very atoms that make us up. All of these are manifestations of energy. So, if energy can't be destroyed but only transformed, what happens to our energy, our essence, when we pass away? This is where the law of thermodynamics steps onto the stage. It tells us that the energy in a closed system such as the universe remains constant. If our universe is indeed a closed system, then the energy that we are made of must continue to exist in one form or another, even after death. So could the universe, in its infinite wisdom and unyielding laws, send us back to Earth, our energy reincarnated into a new form? Do we like energy transform rather than cease to exist? While we don't have definitive answers, these scientific principles offer a tantalizing possibility. So the theory suggests that, just as energy, we might not be destroyed but merely transformed. How does the law of energy conservation relate to the concept of reincarnation? This is a question that bridges the gap between hard science and philosophy, and it's well worth exploring. Firstly, let's look at the law of energy conservation. In its simplest form, this law states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only changed. It's a fundamental principle in physics, and it applies to every interaction in the universe, from the smallest atomic particles to the largest galaxies. Now let's turn our attention to the concept of the soul or consciousness. It's a complex, intangible entity, one that we usually associate with spirituality rather than science. However, if we consider consciousness as a form of energy, a fascinating possibility emerges. If the energy that makes up our consciousness cannot be destroyed, what happens to it when we die? Could it be that this energy simply changes form, perhaps even dispersing and then reassembling in a new configuration? In a sense, could our consciousness be recycled and reused by the universe, much like physical energy is? This is where the concept of reincarnation comes in. Reincarnation is the belief that the soul or consciousness can be reborn in a new body after death. It's a cornerstone of many Eastern philosophies and religions, but it also has a certain resonance with our scientific understanding of energy. If our consciousness is indeed a form of energy, and if energy cannot be created or destroyed, then it's entirely plausible that our consciousness could be reborn after death. It might not be in the same form, and it might not carry the same memories, but the underlying energy could continue, perhaps even finding a new existence on Earth. In essence, our energy might be reborn, potentially leading to another existence on Earth. It's a thought-provoking idea, one that challenges our understanding of life, death, and the universe itself. And it's an idea that brings a whole new dimension to the law of energy conservation. Could the universe really have its own form of a recycling program? It's a question that invites us to look beyond our earthly realm and into the vast cosmos. But to understand this, we must first understand the concept of cosmic recycling. Cosmic recycling is the grand process by which the universe reuses its own material. Stars, for instance, are the universe's most proficient recyclers. They are born from the dust and gas of space. They live their lives burning brightly, and then they die. But their death is not the end. Instead, it's a dramatic transformation. When a star meets its end, it doesn't simply disappear. Instead, it explodes in a supernova, scattering its elements across the universe. These elements then coalesce into new stars, new planets, and perhaps even new life. This is how the universe recycles, not in a linear fashion, but in a beautiful cyclical process of death and rebirth. Now let's draw a parallel to the concept of reincarnation. Just like stars, we too are made of matter, and according to the law of conservation of matter, matter cannot be created or destroyed, it can only change forms. 
So when we die our bodies decompose and return to the earth, and the elements that once made us can go on to become part of something else, a tree, a flower, or even a new life. This is not to say that reincarnation and cosmic recycling are one and the same, but they do share a common thread. The idea that death is not an end, but a transition. A transition that allows for the continuation of life in a different form, be it in the cosmos or here on Earth. So, in a way, we might be more connected to the universe than we realize. We might share a common cycle with the stars, a cycle of death and rebirth that binds us to the cosmos. We might be more connected to the stars than we realize, as they too undergo a cycle of death and rebirth. How have philosophers viewed the idea of reincarnation and our return to Earth? This question has intrigued thinkers for millennia across various cultures and eras, each with their unique perspectives on this cosmic cycle. Ancient Greek philosophers, for instance, delved deep into this mystery. Pythagoras, known for his theorem, also postulated the transmigration of souls, asserting that souls are immortal and cycle through a series of lives. Similarly, Plato, in his dialogues, suggested that souls are reborn, learning and growing with each life. Across the globe in the East, reincarnation is a cornerstone in philosophies like Buddhism and Hinduism. In Buddhism, the concept of samsara refers to the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, driven by karma. The goal is to break free from this cycle, achieving nirvana. Hindu philosophy also emphasizes the cyclical nature of life and death, with the soul journeying through various lives, learning and evolving. In the realm of modern philosophy, Friedrich Nietzsche introduced the concept of eternal return, he proposed that all events in the universe recur infinitely, including our lives. This idea, while metaphysical, shares a curious similarity with the scientific concept of energy conservation. Both suggest a cosmic recycling program where nothing is truly lost but transformed. However, not all philosophers subscribe to the idea of reincarnation. Many, especially in the Western tradition, emphasize a linear view of life and death, focusing on the uniqueness and singularity of each life. In the grand scheme of things, these philosophical perspectives on reincarnation offer a rich tapestry of thought. They invite us to ponder the mysteries of life, death, and what lies beyond. They challenge us to question, to learn, to grow, and to understand the universe and our place within it. From both a scientific and philosophical perspective, the idea of returning to Earth after death is a fascinating one. Whether we consider it a cosmic recycling program or an eternal return, it's a concept that continues to captivate our collective imagination. So why does the universe bring us back to Earth after death? This question has been the focus of our exploration today and although we may not have a definitive answer, we've surely uncovered some fascinating theories. Firstly, we delved into the scientific theories of energy and matter conservation. We learned that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. The same principle applies to matter. When we die, our bodies decompose and return to the Earth, and our energy is released back into the universe. Perhaps in some form or another, we do return to Earth after death. We then explored the concept of cosmic recycling. The universe is a grand recycler, reusing and repurposing everything in a constant cycle of creation and destruction. Stars explode and scatter their elements across the cosmos, eventually forming new stars, planets, and perhaps even life. It's a beautiful thought, isn't it? Each of us could be made of stardust, and when we die we might just return to that same cosmic dust. Finally, we pondered the philosophical perspectives on reincarnation. These ideas suggest that our consciousness, our very essence, may be reborn in a new life after death. While this is more of a spiritual concept, it still aligns with the idea of the universe as a grand recycler. These theories and concepts certainly give us a lot to think about. They challenge our conventional views of life and death and encourage us to see ourselves as part of a much larger, grander cycle. We are not separate from the universe. We are an integral part of it. Whether we truly return to Earth after death remains a mystery, but one thing is clear. We are all part of an intricate, beautiful cycle of energy and matter in this vast universe. And with that thought, we wrap up our exploration. Until next time, keep questioning, keep wondering, and keep exploring the mysteries of our universe.